morning. Welcome to Anna Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna and this is a podcast about knitting and today a little sewing included and we also have a book talk on each of our episodes with a link with uh, fiber related activities and children's literature. So welcome. I'm coming to you from Manassas, Virginia and it is Monday Oh, what's the date there? November 20th, Thanksgiving week here in the United States. So let's get started. I, I'm going to start today with some finished objects. And the first finished object that I have are a pair of monkey socks. This is the first time I've done this pattern and um, I've heard a lot of other podcasters talk about knitting this and how it was very memorizable and that was true. It takes me a little longer to memorize but um, it is memorizable and it's a lovely pattern, makes a um, stretchiness because of the lace here so they're, these are very well fitting. Last time I had gotten through the heel and mentioned that I decided to do it as a garter rather than a slip stitch heel and um, they fit very nicely. I, I hope that this doesn't, uh, with wear, get a little set baggy. Uh, that I did start thinking that perhaps garter stitch would stretch too much there, but I, we'll see. Um, so these are done with um, the Bake Off colorway of Lay Family Yarns, and this is called Bake Off Sock Set. It's an 80% superwash merino. 20% nylon. It's a high twist. There were 100 grams and 400 meters in that. And you can see that Bake Off colorway looks a lot like uh, cupcake sprinkles on the, um, the yarn. And I really like the colorway. And we did have a winner of this same colorway. The yarn was provided by Kelly at Lay Family Yarns. And that was sent off uh, this past week to a lucky winner from our sock um, knitting finished object thread, which we are continuing. I, I marked down what number we were through last time and we will do another drawing probably the end of November, beginning of December for another winner. And um, I had shown last time that a lovely, generous viewer contributed a sock set from the Cozy Knitter and the Whisper colorway. And so that will be the prize for the end of November. So this is my, um, my monkey socks. My second and final finished object is the shawl that I was working on. It is the Kindness Shawl. And I did purchase this yarn. Um, it's The pattern is by Jala Spiro, and I believe she is affiliated with or owns somehow. <laughs> I don't know quite the relationship at all, but it's um, for circus knits. And um, I did order the yarn. It was on a sparkle base. I don't know if that was this, that particular sample was knit with a sparkle base. And I chose to do it opposite rather than starting with the um, dark and going to light. I started with the light and went to dark. So here's my finished object as much as I can show of it. See, there was this eyelet lace section, which moved into this mesh section and I did see a comment in um, the thread. This was originally a knit along, and I did see a comment from the people who were originally uh, knitting it during the knit along that this is called Irish Mesh. I loved it. That was my favorite part of the whole shawl. I think it made a really lovely mesh. And then the last part was called a horseshoe lace, and I had enough yarn to do um, an extra repeat of the lace. I believe you're supposed to do three repeats and I did four. And um, I think I might have one, done one extra row of garter at the bottom. I could have done, what I was doing is I actually would have liked to have done five repeats and I think I probably could have. I started weighing my yarn after two repeats and it was taking nine grams for each of the um, lace, complete lace repeats. So I knew I needed, of course, some for the bind off and those garter rows, which helped to, it to lie flat. And I ended up with um, what I thought, oh, if I do that, it's going to be yarn chicken and I'm going to lose. But I think I probably would have won because in the end I have nine grams left. So that would have been the repeat, but you just can't tell. So um, this is the tag from the Knit Circus yarn. 
from the Fairy Dust base, and it's a superwash merino nylon and the sil silver Stellina. So that is what I have left. Um, in the pattern, it's an easy pattern. It um, makes a pretty lacy shawl. It's very light feeling. I blocked it rather aggressively. Um, I would say, though, that I wish I had tried to figure out how to do this a slightly differently. You have this edge here, which are, these are the increases along the edge. So on either side, you're always increasing stitches through very common way with yarn overs. But when you get to the mesh and the lace, you stop doing those increases. And I think it would have um, blocked out better and I like the continuity of having this exact same edge all the way along. And you see you don't have it because you stop increasing. Um, the other thing was a lot of them were blocked out where this edge was pulled. So you had the upside down scallops. And I was going to do it that way. I actually had it pinned out. But it was just a little tight. And... Um, I think if I'd had the increases on the edges, it wouldn't have been so tight. There's a way to do it. You just have to uh, chart out, you know, what happens each row when when you've added. You need to chart that out. And theoretically, I know what you need to do in my in your my head. I know what you have to do, but I haven't done it, and so I didn't feel confident uh, just jumping in there and doing it with this one but I think that might have made the pattern go a little better and as I said it's an easy pattern but also written in a way that I found maybe if you're a beginning shawl knitter um, a little tiny bit hard to follow because they give you instructions for the part that you're doing in two different pages places on two different page two different pages so the back and forth or then remember even though you've read it um, remembering to do it it, it I think it could be, have been written out just slightly uh, more user-friendly, particularly if this might have been a person's first shawl. That might have been a little bit difficult to follow. But anyway, I love the shawl. The colors are pretty, and I'm very happy with it. And um, I love how light it feels after it was blocked. So that's all I have this time for finished objects. But I have some works in progress to share also. So um, I did start knitting on a pair of Christmas socks, and let me get my tag here. Last year, um, someone on Instagram had posted um, an in-progress pair of socks, and I loved the colorway, and went and found it on her project on Ravelry and found the yarn that she was using, and I ordered it. It is called Sun Soaked Yarns by Jody. And the colorway is Christmas Tensile. You can see it's 400 yards. It's a 75-25, so it's a um, merino, wool, nylon, and stellina. It does not say that it's super wash, but I think it is. So I am not done. This, as I said, this is a, a work in progress, but I am doing them two at a time. That, that looks a little redder than it really, maybe, yeah, that's, probably uh, still not quite right. Uh, the pink's a little lighter in real life. Um, so it's a colorway that's on the Stel silver Stellina. It has green, red, and then this pink. She also provided uh, mini, and I've got it into two small balls left. This is all I have left for one toe, and I have the same amount for the second toe. Um, I started off with 72 stitches and decided it was doing this pooling and also my legs need the 72 here but probably not here so about here I um, reduced four stitches on each sock and then about an inch later I reduced another four and I like the way this part looks better than this I mean this is fine but I just I prefer this look so I wish I had just like started with 64 stitches, but you know you gotta get it over that uh, that uh, arch. So it's helpful to have it a little bit bigger there. I'm doing a slip stitch heel, and um, I think this is a not a square turn around a round heel, and 
the front. So now I have picked up the gusset stitches, but I have not started any of the decreases. So I should be able to decrease those gusset stitches and get the foot and the toe done um, maybe this week. So this is what the yarn looks like in one of the cakes. If you can see, yeah, see a little of the Stellina there. I think they're very festive and I like the addition of the pink. That was a pleasant addition for me. So that's my pair of socks and then um, I usually have a pair of socks going or I probably say I always have a pair of socks going even if I'm not actively working on them. I do have the Beam Me Up socks that uh, didn't do much on this week but I really need to move on that because I'd like to get them done before the end of the year. Um, but then I usually have a shawl going. So I was planning to work on the surprise party shawl by Helen Stewart and um, I've ordered yarn and it came and it's not color wise going to work so I've ordered some more yarn and changed my plan just a little bit. It's so hard to order online because you look at it, it actually it looks okay but it was a tweed so I wanted black and it has black tweed in it but it also has brown specks and the brown just um, isn't going to work with the other colors so there, it's a lovely yarn. I might even over dye it and use for socks. I have a couple of skeins of sock yarn that have been done on dyed on that kind of a base. So this was an oatmeal color, very, you know, bland color. So I might over dye one of them for some socks so that I can make use and not think that was a big waste to order something that didn't work. But um, hopefully the new yarn will work. It's on its way. Might even arrive today. Hope so. But anyway, I couldn't. Um, because I didn't have that yarn, the one that came didn't work out. In the meantime, Helen Stewart also with Curious Hand, still same, same designer with Curious Handmade is doing a project she's done, I think for three or four years, Knit Vent. And last Thursday, a shawl pattern came out in Knit Vent called the Tool Shawl. And here is a picture of it. It's a single skein shawl. And I love it. I think it's beautiful. So I had a yarn that I thought would just be perfect. The theme of the knit vent this year is the Nutcracker Ballet and tulle, you know, being that netting material that they make their uh, tutus out of. So I have some yarn that was, that's underneath the pattern. I thought of it as pink when I ordered it, but when it arrived, it um, has more of a, a little lavender tint to it. It's a slightly lighter than it's coming through there. Mm, still a little bit lighter than this, but it has more of a, a, a lilac tone under it, or maybe even like a super light orchid color. Here is the tag for that. And I don't know how to say the name Julie Aslan. I'm not sure. And it is this, again, I can't say it, Lizu fingering, maybe 90% superwash merino, 10% silk. So I think it'll have a nice drape. It's gorgeous to knit with. It's, it has kind of a plump feel to it. It is, um, the colorway is called Romance. And the content, um, I mean, what, the meter, 115 grams, 420 yards. So it's a little bit plumper because you're getting an extra 15 grams there. I'm at 25% on this shawl, and this is the right side. So um, I'm using the recommended, I think, size 6 needles. So far, it's just garter stitch at the beginning, but it does have beads. So they're really... Um, very subtle. I chose a color that is actually just about this color. I ha already had the beads. I hope I have enough beads. I only had two tubes. Let me see my where my beads go. Sorry. Oh, here they are, right in front of me, so that I could grab them easily. So I am using these Toho beads, and they never have a color on them. So I don't know what the name of the color is. It's a pale pink. A mm, little bit darker than they're showing up here. But I had two tubes, and um, it does tell you how many beads you need. And so I went online and saw how many beads were in a gram. These are nine gram tubes. And it's not enough based on what the pattern says to have for beads. But I think she's always generous because, you know, you 
get a bead that's too small, the hole's too small so it doesn't work. So maybe she increased that because I went through the pattern and added up. She tells you on each line, you know, how many beads you used in that row. And I think the number's very generous. So we'll see, maybe I totally missed something and there are more beads than I think. But if so, I'll have to try another. I got them at Michael's, but I think Joanne sells the same, may sell, sell the same kind of beads. And I have two Michaels and one Joanne, so I can check some other places. I do have another color that similar, would have been just fine with this instead, but of course I went with that one. Well, I only had two tubes of either one, so that was a really my only choice unless I wanted to go out and start all over with beads. So that's two works in progress, and I do have a third one. And the third one is the, looking around for the pattern, here it is. It is the bobble hat, and this is by Donna Smith. And this was the Shetland Wool Week hat or pattern for, uh, I think, two years ago. It wasn't this year's because this year was done by Gudrun Johnston. So um, I'm working on this hat. Now, this uh, sample was done with brown at the bottom and the kind of a gray at the top. I'm doing green and blue, so sky blue and uh, green for the grass. So... Here is what I have so far. Um, I'm more pleased with this than I was with my mittens as I'm working. Um, it seems to be going a little bit better. I did rip all, I was this far, exactly this far, and I ripped back to here and started again because I did get gauge with a size 9 needle, and I did a gauge swatch until um, I, d I ended up doing like four needles um, going up and down trying to see what would happen. So the gauge that I got was correct with the 9s, but it looked so loose here. So I ripped it back and went to an 8, which is what I had done the ribbing in. And that's okay. If it, I, I have put it on my head. I don't have a hugely huge head. And so it actually... it up to where you know you can see like to here it fits me but if if my daughter would wear it I'm not sure if she would or not but she has a smaller head than I do so it will fit her and I more than the fit I was concerned about trying to make it look the way it's supposed to look the uh, color work as if you've watched before you know I'm struggling with this and trying to learn but um, and it's not perfect but I'm happier with it the yarn that I'm using uh, is um, the green is a Malabrigo Rios lettuce in the lettuce colorway. So, and then the cream is the Malabrigo Rios natural. And I already had this and I already had the green. So that's why I decided to go with that. I talked to someone in a local yarn shop and um, she said this was a good match. It's not the same stickiness as the yarn that was recommended, but. Um, I think I'm having an easier time with it not being so sticky. Then for the blue, this is not a Malabrigo in the Rios. I couldn't find a blue even to order that I thought the color was right. This is a Plymouth, and I don't think I have the tag for this right now. This is Plymouth Galway Worsted, and I don't know the color. But next time I show this, I will be sure and grab that tag. The black there's very little black. It's just in the legs and faces of the sheep. And I did not want to buy a skein of worsted black, not knowing what else I would do with the skein when I had this skein of Plymouth Encore. It is an acrylic and a wool, which um, only 25% wool, but I already had it. It was the right color and it was worsted, so um, I am using that anyway. Uh, those are my three works in progress. Okay, this part of the podcast, um, if you don't feel like hearing this part, you know, fee any part, d feel free to cut it off or skip forward to something else. But I thought, um, I ran across something in a bag the other day. I was looking all over for something and dug into this bag and I found um, <clears throat> a long abandoned unfinished object. Part of it's finished and part of it's not. And this has to do with my knitting story. I came to knitting through um, a friend and um, was thinking, I'm 
thinking a lot about her right now. She's um, in the hospital and um, don't know quite what's going on because we can't go up to see her. Well, the family's you know, overwhelmed right now and they don't want anybody coming up. So um, still waiting to every day hear what's going on. But she's the one who got me knitting by telling me um, that she was had taken her daughters and daughter-in-law um, on a little Christmas trip and they were all going to learn to knit on YouTube. And um, if I if you've heard this before, um, pardon me uh, repeating myself, but um, I then went home and said, well, I've got some knitting needles that belong to my mother-in-law and some old acrylic yarn and I went on YouTube. I had no idea you could, I, I, I'd heard of YouTube, but I just hadn't used it for anything. And um, that's how I taught myself to knit. And what I did was knit dishcloths. I knit about 75 of them before I ventured off doing anything else. And each one I was teaching myself new um, stitches. This, I found my very first dishcloth that I ever made. It's very faded out. It's probably had bleach in the uh, laundry water, but um, very useful. Um, still, you know, in pretty good shape. Use the sugar and cream yarns as, People do the 100% cotton, and you find those in the major uh, Michaels, Joanne Fabrics, uh, craft supply places. And um, I always did three. Uh, my ideas came from this little book, Lily Sugar and Cream. And what they did was they would do two or three in coordinating colors in the same pattern. And this book had crochet and knitting patterns. And the particular set that I was working on, I, I think I did all the knitting ones in here. I have the page marked. I don't know where my page marker went. Sorry. Here it is. This is the set I was making and they, they've got a variegated and then picked up three of the colors and it was, um, I, I learned a lot of stitches with this particular pattern. It's um, titled Rosemary and um, I learned uh, about making um, decreased stitches and increased stitches and yarn overs I think. So I dug in this bag and I find one that I'm working on right here. And I do have it on a metal needle, a really long circular. But um, so by the time I was working on this one, I had at least stopped using the bamboo needles, which um, these were in the bag too. So I had done some of it on bamboo needles. And um, I had already finished this one in beige or cream and this one in the variegated and then I was working on a solid so I, sh I really need to finish this in fact uh, my mother loves 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 to get dish towels um, she always had my grandmother make them for her which is where I had the idea of doing that and learning new stitches from so that's kind of a an un uh, work in progress that's or un unidentified um, fin un un or unfinished objects, but it's a, a pretty old one. So I really need to stop and finish that and maybe send those for a Christmas gift this year. So that's kind of a long past thing. Okay, now to talk about our knit-alongs or craft-alongs, make-alongs, crochet-along, whatever you want to do-alongs, and um, a giveaway for our Lester's Dreadful Sweaters book that I presented last time on the podcast. So um, our Lester's Dreadful Sweaters, there were 55 um, posts in that thread. I've locked it and put in 2 through 55 on the random number generator. It came up with number 43 and that is Sprite 966. So Sprite966, if you will send me a personal message on, or PM as they say, on Ravelry, then I can get your um, prize mailed out to you. And that was the hardback copy of Lester's Dreadful Sweaters, along with the Knitting I Love pouch for your um, needles. So that's Sprite966. Thanks so much. And then we have, I just want to mention that we still have three make-alongs in progress right now. We have the mitten along, and we ha continue with the sock along, and a shawl along. So um, we will be drawing for prizes later on in those cows. There's chatter thread in our Ravelry group. 
for all three of those. And at the top of the chatter thread um, are the rules, which are um, pretty simple. And then if you would post in the chatter thread as well, um, that's where people can make comments. You can ask questions, you can post progress, tell what yarn you're using, what pattern you're using, and people can respond to you there. Whereas in the finished objects thread, um, all you really can do is post your finished object, and sometimes you're eligible to post twice. If you if you do, just make you know post it, and then just do the same thing again. You know that's if the rules are. For instance, I sometimes it might have said if this is your first pair of socks or your first shawl, or if you used a certain pattern designer you can post twice so anytime that happens you know please post it twice to give yourself an added chance or probability of winning the prize but otherwise in the finished object thread if people will just click on the love button if you like what somebody made and please visit that and do that because it's so encouraging for people who have put something there to see that others are appreciating their work and there have been some really beautiful socks knit and we've had some first time sock knitters which is wonderful and I think first time shawl knitters so I'm excited to um, see what everyone ends up you know putting in those threads so those are the three um, knit alongs but we have a um, I guess I, I, I told about the giveaway. Here's what I wanted to talk about. Our YouTube subscribers are really growing. You know, little by little, it just adds up so fast, but there are 781 subscribers to the YouTube channel, and I'm so excited about that. Um, as you might, if you've tuned in before, you've heard me um, say how excited I am about that. I want to do a giveaway. So as soon as we are at 800, I will just right then go ahead and um, open up a thread for 800 subscribers. And I will probably give it until I podcast the next time. So if, if we've reached 800 by then, then, um, but say we reach 800 the day before I'm podcasting, I'll wait until the next time I podcast to give people ample time, you know, at least a couple of weeks to get in there and um, respond to whatever the prompt might be. And I will just type that right in the thread. Our giveaway, the giveaway prize I want to send out is this egg carton of um, little minis. And these are five gram minis. And I think with that plastic, it might be a little bit hard to see. I specifically bought egg, these, kind, these particular eggs. Oh, it's the same brand I always buy, but these are like the organic brown ones, which I don't care what color they are, but... Um, I wanted this container because I thought it would be nice for, oops, dropped a mini skein, sorry. It's not a rainbow, but uh, there's no true red here, um, but it's a little rainbow of sorts. And all of these minis, they're they're from two, two or three different collections, I think, from Narwhal Knits. And I have ordered her minis before. I love them. They are so beautifully packaged. And um, she always writes, like there's a personal note here that she takes the time to do and she wraps everything beautifully and sends a little sample that's um, smaller than five grams, I think, you know, maybe two or three gram mini with a, a, as a sample of another colorway that you didn't buy. But I love her minis and um, she's in Brighton, Colorado. And that's a town that I drove through many, many times between home and, and college for many years. And um, my cousin's grandparents lived there. It's a little um, agricultural community up um, 85, um, Colorado 85 in Virginia, in Virginia, in Colorado, sorry. Um, anyway, the, these are minis from Narwhal Knits. So it's 12 five gram minis. So 60 grams of five, uh, yarn, which, um, well, maybe with a, a something for heels and toes, you can make some scrappy socks. You could add these to blankets, um, lots of things you could do. So if you're interested in this, as soon as we get to 800 subscribers on YouTube, look for that in the um, giveaway thread, and I'll just probably call it like 800 subscribers uh, thread. Okay, so um, that's exciting and it's something else to look forward to. Those were my knitting works in progress, but I have been doing some uh, sewing or really not on the machine yet, the prep work for sewing. 
sewing, um, some projects take a great deal of prep work. So I've been doing some prep work on a sewing project I want to talk about today. First, I'll tell you that uh, before my grandson was born, um, I told my daughter that I wanted to make a crib quilt for him. And so she went on Pinterest and found one that she liked. It was a series of triangles and she wanted to have the colors a uh, dark blue, a lime green, some white, and then an aqua. So um, with her picture in mind and that project, I went um, fabric shopping and um, found one piece of fabric that has um, little, well, I'll show it to you. This is just a little cut piece of it. So it was this. So it had the blue and it, it doesn't have much white, but it had some gray and then this rather kind of lime green and some aqua in it. And um, but she's so picky that she didn't want any thematic things. And so I guess she thought whales seemed thematic, but when I showed it to her and she saw it all together, she decided in fact she did like it and has since you know decided to add more of the whales. It, it appealed to her after all. So that was my base fabric um, that I was planning things around. So I found we found other fabrics and I, I put together a quilt and I will show it to you as much as I can here. It is a crib quilt, so it's not very big, but you can uh, get a look here. So it's got some uh, aqua in here and the, the polka dots here. And you'll notice that lots of dots in here. I, I, I found this batik, which I really liked because it had that uh, bit of lime with it. But a lot of dots. And I thought, okay, um, you know, like bubbles. And I'm thinking whales and bubbles and such. So a lot of the prints that I found have circles to be like bubbles, and, but still incorporate the... Um, the colors. This was probably one of the more unusual ones, but the colors worked and you know in a quilt you can have all sorts of things. But when I had it quilted, um, I asked for a circular pattern and um, and it, it, you can see it's in um, the blue. And for the back, we put minky on the back so it is so soft. And you can probably see those circles a little bit better there. So, you know, it's just a crib quilt. It's, it's got um, two different borders, the navy and then that uh, main fabric. And I did send this off to be quilted to a quilt shop in um, near, I think it's in Windsor, Colorado, but it, um, a friend, uh, well, a, a, a person who worked in our library, she was a volunteer, she was a parent, and her mother worked at a quilt shop in Colorado. And, um, I went to college in Greeley, so she and I, you know, would talk about that. Her mom came out a few times and I had met her, and when I was doing this, she told me if I sent it to her mom, she would um, have it quilted for me, so that's what I, what I did, and then had it sent back and said that I would, you know, finish tacking down the binding. So I was really happy with how it turned out, but he's not going to be in a crib too much longer. I think we're lucky he still hasn't tried to get out of the crib, really, at two and a half. So I thought I'm going, I still had a lot of fabric from this and I, I cut even, even some squares that I didn't end up using. So I thought, well, I'll make him a bigger one. So I'm really going to take the same idea just with the triangles. Some of the fabric I can't get more of, but I do have enough of that batik to do the a border. And what we're doing to maybe update it, make it a little bit different is his um, bed is gray and his, the bed that he'll use as a big boy bed is gray. And so I thought maybe we should incorporate some gray into some of the squares. So I found this gray that had the little bubbly dots on it, which I, I liked adding. And this gray, which is also a polka dot, but a little bit darker gray. And this gray, which is lighter, but has that chevron shape, which I think those can be waves. Not that it has to fit, but uh, I can get a little carried away on stuff like that. So now I, what I've been doing this week is cutting out all of these squares so that I can start to make 
the triangles for the quilt and then piece them those together. I thought I would share quickly how I did do the um, the triangles. So you'll go from having the big square to having a triangle, two triangles to make a, a, another square, and then you put two triangles together and you end up with these four. So then you'll lay them out and um, on how you decide and then put two of these, if this was a four, put those together, sew them and make strips and then sew the strips together. But to make the, the first triangle, what I do is I use this tool that I dropped a minute ago. Put it so you can see it. Fonz and Porter, if it shows up here, maybe better here. Fonz and Porter. And it's this ruler that you can put from corner to corner and trace on either side of it. And then um, um, put a line down the middle, that'll be your cutting line. And then you're going, you've got two pieces right sides together and you'll stitch a line here. And, on, and here, so on the two farther um, separated lines, and then you come back and cut with your scissors or rotary cutter here, pull it apart, and you have two identical triangles, so you can press your seams open, and then do another one and put those together and do the same thing. So um, I guess that's, yeah, then this would just be another one of the same thing. So then I would have four different fabrics going together, to, and you end up with, the four triangles of different fabrics. So you have to do a lot of variety. You know, you're not gonna do them all gray with this gray with this white. You have to put it down and lay it out and try and get a large variety. I could not find at Joann's, which is now our only fabric store, I could not find the color I want. I wanted a bright lime green for the backing, but I did find this color green. And when I laid the fabric on it, I thought, okay, that, that'll work. It was blue, the, we went with the dark blue before, but th this will work. So I have the backing and I do still need to buy some batting and then I will have to get busy sewing. But the prep work, um, cutting takes a while. You gotta, you know, iron and then cut. And then all of the drawing of the lines takes a while. Then you start your sewing. So as I said, it's a lot of prep work. So that's what I was doing last week was um, getting some new fabrics and then taking time to wash, iron and cut. So that's uh, some sewing that I've been working on. As you know, if you are uh, have been watching any of my podcasts, I don't um, have what's called a haul section or, you know, sharing the things that I've purchased. And you will see those things as I knit them up and hear about the yarns. But I made the exception several times for my Adelaide Cottage yarns because I... Um, appreciate her yarn so much. And I just did get another installment of the Gilmore Girls collection. And um, this is called Yale Special. Um, if you're familiar with the series, Rory, um, one of the main characters, does go off to Yale. And the Progress Keeper, let me make some noise and go ahead and open that up so that you can see it without any glare. The Progress Keeper is made by the Gnome Knitter and I have ordered from her before. Her work is amazing. But Rory, ordered a pancake sandwich of sorts with a sausage in the middle and wrapped in bacon. And she managed to get every detail of that down. The pancake wrapped, sausage wrapped in a pancake tied with bacon. And it goes right along with this uh, beautiful skein of yarn. So um, the other reason that I mentioned Shauna from Adelaide Cottage is that she Said this came this this weekend, and um, she also sent a second package. So this, I saw the second package first because my husband brought it in from the driveway, and uh, the mailman couldn't fit it in the box. And I thought, okay, this is a, not usually how she sends yarn. But I'm thinking, hmm, well, whatever reason, I'm expecting it's my Gilmore Girls yarn. But instead, it was the most thoughtful gift, and I was... Um, my heart was warmed and uh, it came at a particularly good time for me, I mean, a bad time for me, but it, it lifted my spirits and uh, just reminded me of lots of things. So it was this mug, it says, she, she wrote the sweetest note and said she saw it and thought of me, which, you know, 
is very touching to be thought of by someone that you've actually never met in person but I'm a big dill since I'm in a pickle and she enclosed some tea and one piece of chocolate that um, Mr. In a Pickle, um, any yarn packages come, he, he, his first response is, is there candy inside? Because so many people include tea or a little bit, piece of candy or something and um, it pretty much disappears so sometimes I don't even know what it was. But this was a caramel ch uh, chocolate, um, the Girardelli. But she also enclosed, which he didn't see, in the bottom of the mug, this coffee candy, which is my favorite candy. I love coffee ice cream, coffee candy. I'm a coffee drinker. Um, so it was so sweet to get this note from Sean at Adelaide Cottage. So I hope you go over and visit her, her shop. She's on Etsy. Her yarn is lovely. Um, when you join clubs, it can sometimes be tricky because pretty much you'll get something you're not totally crazy about. Um, don't want to knit up. It might not have been what you would have chosen. But overall, when you don't do that unless you are going to trust the dyer. And I have gotten some before. It's like, mm, I'm not sure what I'll do with that because maybe it's just not colors that uh, I'm thinking of. But everyone, and, and I've been in the Gilmore Girl collection twice now, has been phenomenal. I can't wait to knit with them. So um, I don't want to sound like an infomercial here, but um, I do appreciate her so much. And thank you, Shauna, if you're watching. I appreciate it so much. Well, this is take two of our book talk today. As I was putting things away after the podcast, I realized that I had neglected to talk about two of my books that I had sitting here. So I'm refilming this part. I had to move the camera a little bit this way because the sun is now directly into this room. So um, let's start our book talk. The first book I wanted to talk about is um, actually an adult book and I have seen it mentioned a couple of different places but and based on what I had heard I decided to pick it up myself when I was at the bookstore this weekend. It's a stash of one's own. It's a book of short essays written, uh, edited by Clara Parks and she also has um, a, one of the essays in the book and I've um, read about three of the essays so far and found a lot to um, relate to. I particularly cared for, liked the one, uh, one of the entries that talked about giving away your stash. And um, so that, that's something that um, I'm doing or and hope to do a little bit on the podcast here. So this, I, I would recommend this if you're someone who maybe struggles with stash, thinking about stash, afraid you have too much, or think that you want a new stash. There's some excellent essays in here. Stash of one's own. And the next book is actually our fiber-related story, a uh, piece of children's literature. And this is called Mrs. Fiddlesticks Wears a Hat. And this is a book that was written by two teachers because a teacher in their school was going through um, chemo and was losing her hair. And they wanted to explain to the children why she was wearing a hat. It's a very cute story. She um, tries to find different things to put over her head and ultimately um, knits a hat. And so in, there's our little knitting piece. This book is particularly special to me because the author, Becca Miller Desjardins, was a teacher that I worked with at two different schools. In both cases, she was a speech therapist and later on went to become a reading specialist and is still serving as a reading specialist in um, the same county where I worked. I am not doing a drawing for this book this week because I, I had intended to. This is my copy of the book and so I went on Amazon to order another copy so that we would have one to um, mail out to a winner and the one that I received was bent um, and I don't know if it was bent originally. I don't think so. The envelope it was in was bent probably in my mailbox and also it had been inscribed on the inside which had not been mentioned um, in the description of the book. It came from a used bookseller. So if you're interested in this book, you could look on Amazon. They do have um, as um, other ways to buy it, which is through the secondary market, copies of this book. Um, one of uh, the, uh, one, well, they wrote it and then one of the, the uh, teachers, the other teacher, uh, Beth Ripley Owermole, I believe, um, she's the illustrator and she, um, did the illustrations and so you'll see 
nicely illustrated, just a very um, sweetly done story for a difficult topic to try and explain to young children. So Mrs. Fiddlesticks wears a hat. The next three books I want to talk to you about are all related to um, the tradition in the United States of Thanksgiving, which Thanksgiving is Thursday of this week, today's Monday. So I want to get the, this done today so that this could uh, be out there before Thanksgiving, I'll, admittedly not too far in advance. The first book is one of my favorite books about Thanksgiving for several reasons. First, it's a true story. Second, it's not the traditional pilgrim story that you're used to hearing or reading to children. Instead, it's a book about how Thanksgiving actually became a national holiday and how it's celebrated as such. And there, it went through actually a long period where um, it was not a recognized holiday. But thanks to the perseverance of Sarah Hale, it did in fact become the holiday that we all know. And the title of the book is Thank You, Sarah. It's written by Laurie Halsey Anderson, and it was illustrated by Matt Faulkner. It um, is what we call narrative nonfiction. It is a true story, but it's told in story format, so like a, um, you know, a, a, non, a fiction book might be told. And um, so you can discuss that genre with children that while this looks to be, you know, there's things that make it look like fiction that's illustrated rather than photographs. And the, the events, you, you hear about real people in the book. It is in fact a, a true story. And a lot of children's biographies are written in this same way. This is not especially a biography of Sarah, although it does tell quite a bit about her life. Instead, it tells about a, a particular part of something that she did. And um, it has a bit of humor to it. Talk here about Thanksgiving needed a superhero and that in fact, this is your superhero. And her way of being a hero was uh, she needed a secret weapon and it was a pen because she wrote many, many letters. It took her 38 years and going through five different presidents to finally have Thanksgiving become the national holiday that it is. So it's um, it's rather enlightening. I When I first found this book, I was unaware of this history. Something else about um, Sarah Hale is that she was a mother of five children. She was the first editor of a magazine, a first female editor of a magazine in the United States. And she's the one who wrote the uh, little tune, Mary Had a Little Lamb. So you might enjoy this story. And um, I always have the children say at the end of the book, thank you, Sarah, because because of her, we do celebrate Thanksgiving in the United States. So, The next one is also um, not about Thanksgiving, but about something that a lot of people pay attention to on Thanksgiving, and that is the Macy's um, Thanksgiving Day Parade. And this book is called Balloons Over Broadway. This is a story of Tony Sarg, I think that's how you say it, and he was a puppeteer and how he became a puppeteer and eventually, after quite a bit, um, developed the type of floating balloon puppets that they use in the Macy's Day Parade. This book by Melissa Sweet, it was a, a Caldecott Honor book. Her illustrative me method is um, very different. It's called mixed media. And um, it's interesting, there, there are definitely you know, illustrations, but then a lot of them will have real things. She's got um, real clippings from the paper at the time, and just a a different a different look at something that you might actually watch every year. So, if you're a watcher of the parade in particular and have children, want to explain a little bit about how this came about. This would be a great book. This is considered bi biography, but again, told in that narrative um, nonfiction format, Balloons Over Broadway by Melissa Sweet. And the last one is just pure fun. It is called Turkey Trouble by Wendy Sil Silvano, illustrated by Lee Harper. And this book, this character, Turkey, I, I think has been in some new books. I haven't read the new ones, the other ones, but um, I think he shows up in some other holiday stories. But um, imagine that Turkey on Thanksgiving does not want to be eaten. And so he um, 
dreams up a number of disguises that he might use in order to avoid being eaten that particular Thanksgiving. And he ha it has a very clever ending. It's funny. It's cute. Um, I know the kids laugh when you read it to them. So uh, all in all, a very enjoyable story. Turkey Trouble. So that then, I believe, um, it's, it's going to be the last of, of the books for today, no matter what. I don't think I can uh, film this again. But sorry for the little background shift there and a little bit later in the day. Thanks. Well, I'm thinking that about wraps it up today. I hope I haven't forgotten anything to mention. Thank you all for tuning in. If you are a return viewer, I appreciate you coming back. If this is your first time, I hope you found something that you enjoyed and um, we'll come back again and perhaps subscribe or hit the like button. I think that's how we've managed to get so many subscribers is that um, when people subscribe to your YouTube channel or like your videos, it increases the number of times that perhaps you're recommended in those recommendation places. I don't really know, but I think that must be what's happened. So. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I enjoy the chance to sit here and talk about some of the things that um, I'm working on. Um, as I may have mentioned before, I don't really have any knitting friends. And so it's nice to get a chance to talk knitting, even though you're not talking back to me. We have had, there, I've had many conversations with some of you um, in our uh, thread some people introduce themselves in the introduction thread over on Ravelry, which is wonderful. We have people who tell me that they're from all over the world, and that's just so exciting to think that people so far away are watching. So I, I thank you all so much. I really appreciate you watching, and um, have great fun with whatever you're doing today. Bye-bye.